Hello there everyone, I love Tears of the Kingdom. It is now my favorite game of all time, even being out Breath of the Wild and Paper Mario the Origami King. This game is almost perfect, with almost every issue from Breath of the Wild being hammered out, including climbing in the rain, which still kinda sucks even with the froggy armor, tripling the map size, even more surface exploration, and many more. However, many new issues have arisen. A lot of it to do with the new story. Let's get a quick list of my nitpicks, shall we? Lack of flashing on the main characters, bad voice acting, dragons being a pain to farm, not enough Ganon, no bombs room, no harder durian, no Cass, no Nintendo shirt shirt, Link doesn't have a shotgun, I can't be a girl, Guru Town has a horny jail, dragons are a pain in the ass to farm, the sensor is ass, and I can't get laid. I mean, the worst problem of them all is the sages suck. For being the main story objective, aside from killing Ganon and finding Zelda, the sages were done extremely poorly in my opinion. Well, that's not entirely true. Their quests to find them are some of the best parts of the game. Tulin, the son of Teba, is an adolescent wind-bending bucket of ch KFC, and he is trying to get into a tornado blizzard to stop the giant blizzard over Rito Village. After chasing down the little bird, we help him retrieve his bow from evil monsters. And he learns a valuable lesson of teamwork, aka letting Link do all the heavy lifting and being a ranged support to it. Anyway, we do sky parkour for flying trampoline boats, and, fi and finally dive through the clouds into the center of the storm, the Stormwind Arc. This is one of my favorite dungeons. The concept of a legendary sky boat and a tornado is awesome. We get in, open up the center, and do a cold dry in the clouds. Once we defeat him, we gain access to the Wind Temple of Secret Stone. We then get a 10 minute long cutscene of Mr. Sage explaining the imprisoning war in the most sl as slowly as possible. And saying Tulin needs to help Link. The other sages follow a very similar path. You meet the sage, try to help them with an issue in the region, finding clues to fix said issue, having a big fight with something, do another puzzle, and find a temple. For Yanobo, you meet him getting people high on drugs. You get him, you beat him up, fight Moragia, find a temple, and beat up Goma. Hey, this is editing me here. I forgot to mention, I absolutely hate Yanobo. He is easily my least favorite character in the game. I just don't like him. Especially because he, sa he says Goro at the end of every sentence. He's just like, hi there, Goro. It's just so annoying. Anyway, back to the video. For Sidon, you find him on a mountain facing the sludge. Fix this slab, fight sludge-like, find big Zora guy, shoot an arrow, and boom, st stupid looking temple. Finally, you can't see shit in the desert, so you find Riju and fight off bug zombies. You solve a light puzzle, fi fight mama bug zombie, and get stoned. I mean, get the stone. While these all follow very similar structures, I think it works to establish the main story of the sages and build up your connections with them. Once you clear all these quests, you can go to Hyrule Castle to fight the Phantom Ganons, where the sages save Link from dying. Where the hell were you guys five minutes ago? I feel like a 5v10 is a lot better than a 1v10. Then we get to the fifth sage. This game's plot twist, unless you've been paying attention to the story. To make a very long story short, you discover a secret tablet pointing to the Pharaoh sky in Kakariko Village. You then play dress up and reveal the Thunderhead Isles. We get to Dragonhead Island and find Minri's new head, earn the depths, assemble a new body, take her to the spirit temple, and kill the robot inside it. Now that you guys know the story behind the sages, I can tell you why these guys suck. The Abilities It is well known that the abilities of the sages are complete trash aside from Tulin's. Tulin gives you a horizontal gust of wind that barely pushes you forward and in general isn't that good. This is the best of Sage abilities by far. Not looking too good, is it? Yanobo is the only other Sage ability that I find remotely useful, where it curls up into a ball and you can throw him at stuff. His ability is only good when clearing out these stupid rocks and caves or for mining ore deposits. That's it. Sidon is actually useless outside of boss fights, which makes me really sad. 
His ability can give Link a one-time use shield that can block anything. And if you unleash an attack while the shield is up, you summon a water slice projectile. Which uses up weapon durability for some reason. The shield would be very good if it weren't for another issue I'll bring up later. And a water slice is useless as an attack, as it does very little damage and costs durability. Riju gives you the ability to shoot a lightning arrow at something as long as it's within the, within the lightning aura, which expands the longer it's held out for. This ability would be extremely useful if it weren't for the other issue, but as it is, I find it only good when you're fighting large groups of enemies. I find its only good use is when fighting large groups of small enemies such as Goblins or Gibdos, but Topaz arrows work just as well, if not better. Finally, the actual worst one, Minoru. Oh boy, where do I start with this letdown? After the giant build-up and an amazing quest where you assemble the giant construct, you learn that you get to ride and control the construct. This was so awesome, having your own personal mech. Until you realize this thing moves at the speed of smell, does no damage, and it has a giant hurt box that makes everything damage you. Infusing objects to it doesn't do very much, only having basic functionality. In combat, this construct is just too slow to maneuver around enemies and hit them. This is worsened by the larger hitbox, making you a huge target that can't move out of the way of anything. This would be fine if the construct had good damage output, but it doesn't. It's kind of like a Smash Bros. Heavyweight, just without the damage output and insane survivability. The final biggest issue I have with the Sages is activating the abilities to use in the first place. You have to walk up to the Sage, in the middle of combat, press A, and activate it. And when you're either in a large group fight or trying to fight from distance, this is extremely inconvenient. Having to stop what you're doing, chase down the Sage you want, which is really hard when they're all clustered together and moving away from you, press A, and then use the move. This is such an awful decision that could have easily been remedied by replacing the map rune with a specific sage wheel that could activate the sage's ability every press of the rune button, and maybe the cooldown could be shown just below the rune symbol on the UI. I would also remove using the ability walking up to the sages, since there have been many times where I've tried to pick up an item, but I accidentally used Tulin instead and blow it off a cliff. This has also fixed another big issue, the sages getting in the way all the time. As for the abilities themselves, I think a lot of them would benefit from being able to use them on the press of a button. Maybe Saturn's Water Slice couldn't use durability, and Yunobo's Charge could increase in size to make it better at destroying rocks, but I think the only one that would need a decent rework would be Minoru. I'd buff the speed at the cost of more battery, and allow fused weapons and small contraptions to be stuck to her. I would say you could stick up to like three objects together and attach it to one of her hands. This would greatly buff her combat potential, since that's her main use, and it could open up a lot of creative potential for mechs. Think a construct head with a cannon on her back, or a really long stick attached to her hand. Now to an issue I don't see brought up as, as often, upgrading the sages. In concept, the sage upgrades are fine. It forces you to explore the sky islands, which are sort of underwhelming. I like this, but my issue isn't how you upgrade them, it's what the upgrades do. Just like the champion's abilities in Breath of the Wild, upgrading them does little to nothing to help you. In Breath of the Wild, they made the ability cooldown shorter, which is fine since modifying the abilities themselves can make them way too OP. <coughs> Mifa. <coughs> but these new sage abil but with these new sage abilities, they could have tweaked what they did other than make them do slightly more damage and make them look weird. Seriously, upgraded Minoru looks so much worse than normal Minoru. I think the cooldowns could have been reduced, and each stage could have had something unique. In just a few minutes, I came up with a few possible upgrades. Tulin's Gust could go further, you know, Charge would have a larger radius. Sidon Slash could go further and not cause durability. Riju could have a faster expanding lightning zone, and Minoru could attach multiple objects at once. It's honestly sad how much missed potential the upgrade system has. And I'm sure adding some significant changes would greatly increase the incentive to find the Sage's wills. A minor nitpick I have is that the Sage's avatars don't look particularly good in my opinion, especially in their upgraded state. I also wish you fought alongside the real Sage's a bit more, since the only 
do them one at a time in the respective quests, and a little at the end of the game, where they serve little to no purpose since Ganon knocks all of them out immediately. It would be cool if they went up to Hyrule Castle with you, or descended down Gro Gloom's Lair with you, although the latter wouldn't work as well with building the tension in this area. In conclusion, the Sages have amazing quests, but the Sage abilities and the way to use them are poorly done, in my opinion. I think the abilities were too niche and way too inconvenient to use in the main setting they're used in, combat. A Sage Wheel would greatly improve this, and I thought a better upgrade system would further help make the Sages feel like a more substantial reward for your effort. Oh. Well, I think that's it for this video. Let me know if you enjoyed with a comment. A like and subscribe would also be greatly appreciated. Do you think Pyrrha should have been the next Sage of Spirit? Well, with that said, see you guys next time and have a great day.